if Allen's rule is this uh, rule that was proposed about 140 years ago by an American naturalist called Joel Allen, who suggested that uh, extremities, so things like limbs and tails and ears and also beaks uh, of animals would get smaller in colder climates in order to tr loo uh, prevent heat loss um, through those extremities. They use, in addition to the eating and the sexual displays that birds use their beaks for, uh, the thermoregulatory function is one that hadn't really been thought about too much before, um, but it's now becoming increasingly apparent that it's actually an important role that beaks play. So if it gets too hot, they pump lots of blood to the beak and they're able to lose heat in that manner, uh, a bit like the blood being pumped to a, an elephant's ears and the elephant flapping the ears. On the um, other side of that, if it gets too cold, uh, then they can, for a certain amount of time, withdraw blood from the beak and try and prevent uh, heat loss. And he'd noticed as he was handling the birds, their beaks felt really hot. Um, something much hotter than the rest of the bird. And he thought, oh, that's interesting. If there's heat coming out of them, are they actually using their beak as some kind of heat radiating device? Yes. And so he set up his thermal imaging camera with some captive toucans at a zoo and yeah, found that the beaks glow uh, when they're under their thermal imaging camera. And we wondered if, well, if variation in beak size in these um, toucans could be explained by the climates they're experiencing and whether the toucans that are in colder climates up at higher elevations up in the mountains have smaller beaks than the toucans that are down in the Amazon basin where it's all nice and hot and humid. I collected this data uh, using just information from the literature and just looked for that trend whether there was a relationship between altitude of the species and its beak size and found a really clear pattern that there was that fitted exactly with the predictions of Allen's rule. Once we saw that clear result we thought well is this just something to do with toucans you know they've got big beaks you know maybe there's something unusual about toucans mm. and so we thought well we're gonna have to look at some other groups as well so we took a uh, an analogous group of birds, the barberts, which also have big beaks that live, but live in Africa. Uh, and then we thought we'd better expand that to birds with very different types of lifestyles and, and beak sizes. So we looked at parrots in Australia, we looked at penguins, uh, we looked at finches, we looked at sea, um, seagulls, we looked at terns. Uh, so quite a number of different groups um, that we examined. And in all but one of the groups we looked at, we found this clear relationship between the ambient temperature of the, the range of the species and the size of their beaks. The, the species living in colder environments, so either higher altitudes or um, higher latitudes, in other words closer to the poles, um, have smaller beaks than the species that are living at lower altitudes and closer to the tropics. We had a honours student, I had an honours student um, called Daniel Campbell Tennant who went and measured the beaks of museum specimens of five Australian parrot species uh, dating back from around about 1870 through to the present day and we started looking for trends to seeing whether if the climate's getting warmer is there evidence that the beaks of these parrots are also getting bigger. Uh, as would be predicted by Allen's rule. And we found that in four of the five species of parrots that Dan measured, uh, there were clear trends that there is increasing beak size in these parrots.